Xu Xiaodong is back in the news again after he faced a Wing Chun student named Ding Hao. Nomad Dog Xu has been in the news ever since he knocked out a self-proclaimed Tai Chi master named Wei Lei in under 10 seconds at the start of his crusade to expose fake martial arts teachers in China last year. I'm going to give you my thoughts on this fight. I'm going to update you guys and tell you why Ding Hao is not a disgrace to Wing Chun and all that's coming after the bump. What's up Urban Acolyte Army? My name is Prince and I'm an Urban Acolyte. If you're new here, we talk about Star Wars, comic book movies, and martial arts. I call it geek culture with a purpose. And in this video, I'm gonna step outside of what I normally do to talk about a real world event in the martial arts world. Now last year, I did a video about this guy, Xu Xiaodong. He's an MMA coach in Beijing, and he runs a gym where he trains athletes for MMA competitions in China. Xu Xiaodong started this crusade to out traditional martial arts teachers who he considered to be fake. But this all started because of this growing concern over fixed fights that involve fighters representing the Wu Lin, which is an organization made up of a lot of the traditional martial arts schools in China. Now, if you want all the details on the fight between Xu Xiaodong and Wei Lei, go check out that video from last year. Now, since that time, people who haven't followed Mad Dog Xu believe he's been pretty quiet, but that's actually not true. Several people representing various styles of Tai Chi have stepped up to challenge him, including Nip Oshipshik, a former UFC fighter who now studies Tai Chi. Now, back in the summer, Xu Xiaodong was involved, involved in a four-man brawl that involved other MMA fighters and other Tai Chi students. The cops busted up the event because it was an unsanctioned fight. So basically, they got together to have an illegal brawl. I mean, hey guys, Fight Club is a great movie, but in the real world, all that underground fighting stuff is illegal, is dangerous, and it's pretty stupid. So that brings us to this recent style versus style match. MMA versus Ip Man Wing Chun on a red carpet with a fancy dressed referee and it was held in Japan with press everywhere to cover the event. I mean, this looks more like some kind of media event than an actual fight. The shoe shows up in his rash guard gear and gloves and Ding Hao, he's dressed like he's gonna be an extra in Ip Man 4. Ding came out fighting like he was an extra in, Ip, in an Ip Man movie too. He opened up the fight with a flurry of punches and they didn't work. He got slammed, he got pummeled and popped by Xu Xiaodong until the referee finally stopped the match and declared the fight a draw. Now what might not have been reported was the fight on the undercard between another MMA fighter who fought a different Wing Chun student with his right hand tied behind his back. So Mad Dog Xu, in his crusade to go against traditional martial arts, he beats a fourth generation Ip Man student and then had this second match that shows how an MMA fighter can beat a Wing Chun guy with one hand tied behind their back. Now the irony here is that Xu had a problem with stage demonstrations. So what does he do? He goes and stages a demonstration. Now since all of this went down uh, back in March, I've had people posting on that other video that I did last year, well Kung Fu sucks, it's all fake. And Ip Man Wing Chun Master got beat, Prince. What do you think about that? Ding Hao's a disgrace to Wing Chun. Now, first off, how does one guy losing an exhibition fight disgrace an entire style of martial arts? I mean, there's that big French Canadian Wing Chun guy. He beat up an Asian martial arts teacher who was half his size. So if Pierre Flores beats up Xu Xiaodong, well, what does that mean? I mean, is is Wing Chun suddenly redeemed now? Would that make Wing Chun better than MMA? Or is it just that these two guys have a fight and one guy came better prepared than the other person? Or maybe they weren't even evenly matched. I mean, weight classes exist for a reason. And this is what I have to say about this Wing Chun versus MMA exhibition. Xu Xiaodong is coaching athletes and he's sparring regularly. Ding Hao might be teaching his Wing Chun students and maybe they do a little bit of free sparring in addition to their chi sao and sticky hand drills, but he's not sparring outside of Wing Chun. See, 
it's like this. Everybody likes to quote stuff that Bruce Lee said about traditional martial arts without actually understanding the context. Bruce described a lot of Chinese martial arts as dry land swimming. I mean, think about that now. You can't swim on dry land. You have to get in the water and get wet. Wing Chun has all kinds of partner and contact drills, but to really work that stuff, you have to get into Wing Chun range to make that bridge. You have to know how to enter into that range with people from all kinds of styles, not just Wing Chun people, right? It's like uh, my first Sifu, cause my first style is Wing Chun, he said, he told us, look, go out and watch a lot of Shaw's brother movies, right? So no, learn, you know how they demonstrate the different styles at the start of them old school Shaw Brothers movies. He said, learn that. And then uh, one person, you pretend to be that style. Another person, you, you, you do your Wing Chun. And, you know, somebody's doing uh, Northern Manus with lots of kicks. Now you got to practice your Wing Chun against somebody who kicks a lot. And that might sound silly, but that is to get you out of the habit of, of I'm Wing Chun, you're Wing Chun, and we're sparring, but we're learning how, basically how to do Wing Chun against Wing Chun so that then you can start to spar outside of your style with other people outside of Wing Chun. And the other thing is by learning, he said the other advantage is that now some if you do get in a fight or you are sparring you're in a competition whatever you know they say oh well he does wing chun all he can do is this right and then you show them something that's outside that you have incorporated that you have added to your wing chun right this is sounding very much kind of something you think only bruce lee would say and here's a wing chun teacher who goes around and tells jeet kune do guys hey if you study with me i'm not gonna I, i'm not gonna you know you can't use your jeet kune do in my classes but i'm gonna make your jeet kune do even better because you'll you'll understand the root and it'll it'll help you take your jeet kune do even farther right another thing right people this guy came out and he's throwing these flurry of punches that's not what Wing Chun really is, right? That's, you know, Joe Rogan, these different people, they have made that that uh, that joke, you know, they're throwing these fast punches. The chain punches, that's not what Wing Chun is. This is Wing, this is Wing Chun, right? I stop my opponent by punching them in the throat. I'm the first to strike. It, it, it's almost like, you know, Cobra Kai, be the first to strike, show no mercy, this and that. And, you know, we talk, well, Wing Chun is for the street. It's not for, com hey, you, you can make anything work in competition, but in competition, you have to understand that you're training for a sport, right? MMA is a sport, and I need people to understand exactly what I'm saying. It's just like and one basketball and the NBA are not the same. They're, they are different rule sets. You know, if I'm playing in a street ball tournament and this guy's coming down the middle, foul! You know, if I nail him with my elbow and break his jaw, that might go there in the street. But that's not going to go in the NBA where players are being paid millions of dollars to win the game but to entertain the fans, right? Just like in MMA, in a competition where you have rules, there are something like 30 illegal illegal uh, there are 30 fouls in in the ufc in mma right there are no fouls on the street and uh i think um something like 22 of those 30 fouls are places that you cannot hit right you cannot go into an mma match thinking okay i'm gonna use my one inch punch or uh one inch power to crush my opponent's windpipe right that's not something that because you're not going in there to kill your opponent right and some people they might that might be the only thing they train is I, I i'm in the street i mean basically that's really what i was taught a lot of uh marsh like chinese martial arts are is that it's a game of chess it's just boxing right i got my best technique and i want to use my best technique before you use yours and it's kind of one of the, and that's where it gets into well, you don't actually ever want to have to use this unless it's in a life or death situation now th this is just me sharing my thoughts the the things that i was taught regarding 
Chinese martial arts be oh it doesn't work it you know what there are ways to to pressure test this to reality test this um and that's why we have the sport that is where you 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 test and you train without the intent of killing someone and to get back to this this match this fight you know Xu Xiao Dong I'm not I hey this guy I'm sure he had some great intentions but he had some some not so good intentions either I mean Xu Xiao Dong is not out he's not out challenging any um he, he's not challenging any San Xiao guys he's not challenging any MMA fighters who have a traditional Kung Fu background in China and they do exist He's not going to Chin Jiago, that's Chin Family Village, and challenging the professional Kung Fu guys there, the guys who were there who were training just as hard, if not harder, than some professional UFC fighters, right? Think about the fact that you have fight camps, you have Kung Fu schools that are putting out fighters, and these people live there at the school on a compound, and they're training eight to 10 hours a day. They eat, sleep, breathe martial arts and it's like they're either going to become a professional stuntman a fighter a policeman or they're going to be special forces in the military right that so you know when we when you know i understand this is youtube university where everybody knows everything about every topic that exists but before you start to say well kung fu sucks and this guy's a disgrace and this is all bad one remember you're watching an interaction between two people. They're not representing their stock. They're representing their own selves. Two, this one person, like I said, doesn't represent the entire style. If if all you know is just this person and a few people, you, you don't know everything. Because I'll put it like this. The best Wing Chun that I've ever seen is not even from a Chinese guy. The best Wing Chun that I've ever seen is a black Muslim dude named Ali. He has hands down the best Wing Chun that I've ever seen. I've, I've trained with some of his students. They said the same thing. This dude's Wing Chun is, is ungodly, right? And so, well, why isn't he doing you? Hey man, the dude is, he's gotta be uh, pushing his 60s now, right? He coaches boxers and he teaches Wing Chun. And if I'm one of those boxers, who's getting the Wing Chun, I'm thinking, hey man, these kids might, they might have something. <laughs> Does Xu Xiao Dong want to challenge one of them? I think not, right? So yeah, Xu Xiao Dong is gonna go, he's gonna beat some other Kung Fu masters, that's fine. But what, if, what did I say in this video, right? He is trashing people about stage demonstrations and now he's basically doing the same thing, he's staging demonstrations. Xu, Mad Dog. Let's see you fight a real fighter who has a kung fu background. If you're gonna, uh, if you're gonna call out the fake martial arts, if you're gonna go to war with the Wu Lin, that's fine, right? But you know, well, what are you really getting out of this outside of some publicity that hey, you beat people who train martial arts but can't fight in a in a sports competition? Or how about this? How about you take some of those guys, put them through a fight camp, and then fight them? Right? Well, so, you know, like, like even out the grounds and say, look, you know, you, you want publicity? Make a reality show around that. I'm going to fight this Xing Yi master, but he's going to go through a real fight camp and have 12, a 12 week fight camp. And then we're going to fight and he's going to get, he's going to have to figure out and take time. Okay. This is how I make my art work in an MMA setting. Right? And what that does is it improves not only traditional Kung Fu because these traditional guys who may uh, may want or have students who want to do that to, to uh, enter in uh, the MMA competitions in China, right? They have their own circuit or make the leap to the UFC, right? You're improving what they have, but you're also improving you're also extending the olive branch so that's those are my thoughts on this i don't know what do you guys think was this guy a disgrace to wing chun i i don't i think he you know he was a poor showing of his own self but i don't think it reflected on wing chun but those are just my thoughts i want to hear yours so let me know 
your thoughts, likes, dislikes, gripes down below, and I'll be checking back to see what you all have to say. If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead, click that subscribe button, and take your first steps towards joining the Urban Acolyte Army. Embark on the journey of becoming the hero of your own story and become a force for change in your community. Continue to support the channel. You can do that by checking out more videos. And uh, if you love this video, make sure you share it with all of your friends. Anyway, that's all I got for this one. Thanks for watching. Y'all keep on breathing. And may the force of others be with you. Always.